Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. Well, welcome back. Glad to have you live here on theCUBE as we continue our coverage of Dell Technologies World 2018. We are live in Las Vegas. We're in the Sands uh, Exposition Center. I'm with Keith Townsend, who had a heck of a night last night. Just a good chicken and waffle Las Vegas night. You know night. what, one o'clock in the morning, chicken and waffles here in the Grand Lux at, in a beautiful Venetian, oh, actually Palazzo, because the one in the Venetian closes at 11. Oh my, you know how to live. You, you know, know how to live, well. and I've always said that about you. <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure to welcome as our first guest of the day, Caitlin Gordon, who is the uh, Director of uh, Storage Marketing at Dell EMC, and good afternoon. Caitlin, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. A CUBE vet. Right, you're a cute veteran. I mean, as three, is that like, is you're sure. over the hump as oh, a veteran yeah, at this point? All right, one, then yes. yes. You, you deserve a varsity letter now. Oh, do I get a letter jacket well, too? Well, we'll work on that okay. later. All we'll right. give you a cube sticker for now, how about okay. that? Okay, I'll take a sticker. All right, so you, you've given, uh, uh, you've launched, I would say given birth, but you've, you've launched a brand new product today. Yep. Uh, PowerMax, tell us all about that. First off, paint us the big picture, yep. and we'll drill down a little bit and find out what's so new about this. Yeah, absolutely. So, hot off the presses, announced yeah. just two hours ago in the keynote this morning. So, PowerMax is really the future of storage. You know, the, the way we're talking about it, it is fast, it is smart, and it's efficient. So, we could kind of go through each one of those, but the, he the headline here, this is modern tier zero storage. It's designed for traditional applications of today, but also next gen, applica next gen applications like real-time analytics. You know, we have some metrics that show us that up to 70% of companies are going to have these mission critical real-time analytic workloads, and they're going to need a platform to support those, and why shouldn't it be the same platform that they already have for those traditional workloads? So let's just go back, I mean, what makes it smarter? What makes it more efficient? You know, what makes it faster? Can we start with fast? Yeah, sure. Okay, that's yeah. my favorite one. Sure. So fast, I got some good hero numbers for you. All right, so good. we'll start there, 10 million IOPS, that makes it the world's fastest storage array, full stop, no caveats to that. 150 gigabytes a second throughput, we've got under 300 microseconds latency, that's up to 50% faster than when we already have with VMAX All Flash. So that's, that's great, that's wicked fast as Bob said, right? <laughs> but how do, how do we actually do that is a little bit more interesting. So the architecture behind that, it is a multi-controller scale out architecture. Okay, that's good, that's check, you had to, gotta start with that. But the next thing we did is we built that with end-to-end -end NVMe. So end-to-end -end NVMe means it's NVMe-based drives, flash drives now, SCM drives, next generation media, coming soon. It's also NVMe over fabric ready. So we're going to have a non-disruptive upgrade in the very near future to add support for NVMe over fabric. So that means you can get all the way from server across the network to your storage array with NVMe. It's really NVMe done right. So let's talk about today. NVMe fabric ready, which I love NVMe over fabric. Connectivity, getting 10 million IOPS to the server in order to take care of that. What are the practical use cases for that much performance? What, what type of workloads are we seeing? Where we see this going in is to data centers where they want to consolidate all of their workloads, all of their practices, all of their processes on a single platform. 10 million IOPS means you will never have to think about if that array can support that workload. You will be able to support everything. And again, traditional apps, but also these emerging apps, but also mainframe, IBMI, file, all on the same system. So can we talk about that as, as, as opposed to, let's even compare it to another Dell family technology. We just had the team, Shana May, and his uh, VMware customer talking about SAP HANA on Extreme I.O. Extreme I.O. is really great for one-to-one -one application mapping such as SAP HANA. So are you telling me that PowerMax is positioned that I can run SAP HANA in an additional to my other data center workloads and get similar Absolutely, it is the massive consolidator. It's kind of an app hoarder. You can put anything on it that you've got. And it's block, it's file, and then it's also got support for mainframe and IBMI, which there's a still a significant amount of that out there. So that, that's an interesting thing. You're having all of these traditional data services. Usually when we see tier zero, zero type of arrays, uh, Dell EMC had one just last year, there's no services because you just sip, it's either go really fast or, or, or moderately fast and data services. How do you guys do that? Yeah, well the, the benefit uh, of where we're coming from is that we built this 
on the platform of the flagship storage array that's been leading the industry for decades. So what we did is we took the foundation of what we had with VMAX and we built from that this end-to-end -end NVMe PowerMax. So you get all of that best-in-class hardware, that optimized software, but it comes with all the data services. So you get six nines availability, best-in-class data protection, the resiliency, everything that you'd need so you never have to worry. So this is truly built for your mission-critical applications. Yeah, so really interesting speeds and feeds. Let's talk about managing this box. Mm. VMAX has come a long way from the symmetric days. So much easier to manage. However, we're worried today about data tiering, moving workloads from one uh, area to another. These, these analytics workloads move fast. How does PowerMax help with uh, day two operations? So you've heard the mention of autonomous infrastructure, right? Really, PowerMax is autonomous storage. So what it has is it has a built-in real-time machine learning engine. And that's designed to use pattern recognition. It actually looks at the IOs and it can determine at, in, in a sub-millisecond time what data is hot, what data should be living where, which data should be compressed. Uh, it can optimize the data placement, it can optimize the data reduction. And what we see this as a critical enabler to actually leveraging next generation media in the most effective way. We, we see some folks out there talking about SEM and using it more as a cache. Mm -hmm. We're going to have SEM in the array side by side with Flash. Now we know that the price point on that when it comes out the door is going to be more than Flash. So how do you cost effectively use that? You have a machine learning engine that can analyze that data set and automatically place the data on that when it gets hot or before it even gets hot and then it move it off it when it needs to. So you can put in just as much as you need and no more than that. So let's talk about scale. You know, I, I'm a trip, typical storage admin. I have my spreadsheet. I know what lungs are mapped to what data and, and to what application. And I've, I've statically managed this for the past 15 years and it's served me well. How much better is PowerMax than my storage admin? I mean, I, I, can, I can move two or three data sets a day you know, from uh, cache to flash. It really, what this enables uh, from a storage administrator perspective, you can focus on much more strategic initiatives. You don't have to do the day-to-day -day management. You don't have to worry about what data's sitting where. You don't have to worry about how much of the different media types you've put into that array. You just deploy it and it manages itself. You can focus on more tasks. The other part I wanted to mention is the fact that you heard Jeff mention this morning that we have Cloud IQ in the portfolio. Cloud IQ we're going to be bringing across the entire storage portfolio, including to PowerMax. So that will also really enable this cloud-based monitoring, predictive analytics to really take that to the next level as well, simplify that even more. Yeah, I'd like to you know, step back to the, the journey more or less. When you start out on a project like this, and you're basically, you're reinventing, right, in a way. Do you set, how do you set the specs? I mean, you just ran off a really impressive array of capability. Yeah. Was that the initial goal line, or how is that process, you know, how do you manage that? How do you set those kinds of goals, and how do you get your teams mm. to realize that kind of potential? And some people might look at you a little cross-eyed and say, are you right. kidding? Right, How yeah. are we going to get there? I don't right. know. <laughs> <laughs> we always shoot for the moon. Right. Um, so we always, you know, they, this type of pro the pro uh, product takes well, well over a year to get into market. Um, so you saw uh, PowerMax Bob on stage there talking about it. So his team is the one that really brings this to market. They developed those requirements two years ago. And they were really looking to make sure that at this time, as soon as the technology curve is ready on NVMe, we were there, right? So this is shipping with enterprise class dual port NVMe drives. Those were not ready until right now, right? Mm -hmm. This box starts shipping next week, they are ready next week, right? Uh, so we're at the cutting edge of that. And that takes an extraordinary world-class engineering team, product management team that understands our customers' requirements that we have today, because we have thousands of customers, but more importantly is looking to what's also coming in the future. And then at some point in the process, things do fall off, right? So we have even more coming <laughs> in future releases as well. So let's talk connectivity into the box. How do I connect to this? Is this, is this iSCSI, is mm. this 
fiber channel, what, what connectivity? Yeah, What's so this is definitely fiber channel. Um, so, and our NVMe over fabric will be supported over fiber channel with this array. What we find with the install base, with our VMAX install base especially, they're very heavily invested in fiber channel today. So right now, that's where we're still focused because that's going to enable the most people to leverage it as quickly as possible. We're obviously looking at when it makes sense to have an IP-based protocol supported as well. So this storage is expensive on the back end. Talk to me about Efi data efficiency, dedupe, are, are we coming out with, because a lot of these tier zero solutions don't have dedupe out the box. Or they have it, but if you use it, you can't actually get the performance right. that you I paid a, for, I, right? The, there's no point in turning it on. Yeah, it's like, yeah, we checked the box, but there's really no point. Yeah, so VMAX had uh, compression, VMAX All Flash has had compression, and what we've done with PowerMax is we now have inline deduplication and compression. The secret to that is that it's a hardware assisted so it's designed to, that, that card actually will take in, it'll compress the data, and it also passes out the hashes you need for dedupe. So that it's in line, it will not have a performance impact on the system, it can also be turned it on and off by application, and it can give you up to five to one data reduction. Hmm. And you can leverage it with all your data services. Some competitive arrays, if you want to use encryption, sorry, you can't actually use dedupe. The way we've implemented it, you can actually do both the data reduction and the data services you need, especially encryption. Hmm. So before we, we um, say goodbye, I just, I'm curious, when you see something like this get launched, right? Huge project, year long as you've been saying, and even further back in the making. Just from a you know, personal standpoint, I mean, you get pumped? I mean, are, are you, I would I gotta imagine tell you, this is the end of a really long road for you. We have been working, for the marketing team, we've been working on this for months. It is the best product I've ever launched. It's the best team I've ever worked with in the past two days since I landed here to getting that keynote out the door. Has been so much adrenaline built up that we're just so excited to get this out there and share it with customers. And, then what, and what's this done to the bar in your mind? Because I mean, you were here, now you're, you're here, but I mean, tell me about this. What have you jumped over in your mind? We have set a very high bar. I'm not really sure what we're going to do at this point, right? <laughs> From a product standpoint, it is in a class by itself. There is just nothing else like it. And from an overall, what the team has delivered from engineering all the way from my team, what we've brought together, what we've gotten from the executive, we, we've never done anything like it before. So we've set a high bar for ourselves, but we've jumped over some high bars before, sure. so we've, we've got some other plans in the future. Well, well so, but, but, John, I'm sorry, you, 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 yep. Let's not end the conversation too quickly. There, all right, there's, all right, sure. There, right. There's some, He's I, got I still, some burning questions. Yeah, I have some burning, this is a big product. So I, I still have a lot of questions from a customer perspective. Let's talk data protection. The, you, you can't have mission critical, all this consolidation without data protection. Absolutely. What are the data protection features of the PowerMax? I'm so glad you asked. I spent a decade in <laughs> data protection. <laughs> it is a passionate topic of mine, right? So you look at data protection, I kind of think of it as layered. Within the array, so we have very efficient snapshot technology. You can take as many snaps as you need. Very, very efficient to take those. They don't take any extra, any extra space on them when you make those copies. And then can I use those as tertiary copies to actually uh, uh, perform work to, to point to workloads such as refreshing, QA, dev, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely. You can mount those snapshots and leverage those for, for any type of use case. So it's okay. not just for data protection, it's absolutely for active use as well. Okay. So it's kind of the on the array. Then the next level out is, okay, how do I make a copy of that off the array? So the first one would be, well, do that to another power Mac. Mm -hmm. So as you probably know, the VMAX really pioneered the entire uh, primary storage replication concept, so we have Certainly async, if you have a longer distance, but a synchronous replication, but also metro, if you have that truly active, active use case. So, truly the gold standard in replication technologies, and our customers, it's one of the number one reasons why they say there is no other platform on the planet that they would ever use. And then, you go to the next level of really talking about backup. Uh, we have built into PowerMax the capabilities to do a direct backup from PowerMax to a data domain and that gets you that second protection copy also on a protection storage. So you have those multiple layers of protection, all the copies across all of the different places to ensure that you have that operational recovery, disaster recovery in that array, and that the data is accessible at all times, no matter what the scenario. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about resiliency. When you look at a, we go into a data center, you see a VMAX array, there's a big box with, with cabinets of, of, of of shelves and you're thinking, wow, this thing is rock solid. 
Look at the Power Max. That thing is what, about a 6U? I think it's pretty cute, right? Yeah, it's pretty cute. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a pretty array yeah. that you have going on there. So, you know, the, the when you see a VMAX, it just gives you this, this, uh, this, this feeling of comfort. Power Max, let's talk about resiliency. Do we still have that same VMAX, rock solid, you know what? The, the, you go into a data center, you see two VMAX, and you're thinking this company's never going to go down. Right. What about PowerMax? Guess what? It is the same system. It's just a lot more compact. You know, uh, we have people consolidating from either VMAXs or competitive arrays where they're in four racks, and they come down into maybe half a rack. Um, but you have all the same operating system, all the same data services, so you have non disruptive upgrades. But you have to do a code upgrade across the whole array at the same time. You don't have to do rolling reboots of all the controllers. You can just upgrade that all at the same time. We have component level fault isolation. So if a component fails, the whole controller doesn't go down. All you lose is that one little component on there until you're able to swap that out. So you have all of the resiliency that over 6.9's availability built into this array, just like you did with the ones that used to be taking up a bit more floor tile space. You know, the Power Max is about 40% lower power consumption than you have with VMAX All Flash, because it can be supported in such a small footprint. So are we going to see Power Max in converged system uh, configurations? Yeah, absolutely. So if you're familiar with the VX Block 1000, which we launched back in February, it will be available in a VX Block 1000. And of course, the big news on that is you have the flexibility to really choose any array. So it could be an X2 and a Power Max in, the, in, in a VX Block 1000. So that's curious. What is the, now that we have Power Max, where's the position of the VMAX 250? Uh, so the, I'm glad you asked. It's an important thing to remember. VMAX All Flash is absolutely still around, and we expect people to buy it for a, for a good uh, amount of time. The main reason being that the applications, the workloads, the customers, the data centers that are buying these these arrays, they have a very strict qualification policy. They take six, nine months, sometimes a year, to really qualify even a new operating system, right. let alone a new platform. So we absolutely will be selling a lot of Emacs All Flash for the, ver for the foreseeable future. Well, Caitlin, it's been a, um, a long time in the making, right? Absolutely. Huge day for you. Yes. So congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank uh, you. Great to have you here on theCUBE, and best of luck, I'm sure. Well, you don't need it. I mean, you've, like I said, superior product. Great start, and uh, wish you all the best down the road. Thank you, I hope to see you guys again soon. Caitlin Gordon, you that before. Yes, before. Uh, we'd love to have you back. Caitlin Gordon joining us from Dell EMC. Power Max, the big launch coming just a couple hours ago here at Dell Technologies World 2018. Back with more live coverage here on theCUBE after this short timeout.